Ceremony for Sister Teresa St. Bernard. And to begin, we ask that you raise your voice if you can to song number 140, which is titled Life Without End at Last. Following this song, we ask Brother Gregory Gomez to go for your prayer. So, song 140, Life Without End. Yeah. 
we approach you this morning with mixed emotions because we have lost our dear sister Teresa. But yet still you have encouraged us from your word the Bible that you will indeed comfort those who mourn. And so the comfort we have, even with her passing, is that she has died faithful to you. So this morning, as we gather here to listen to the discourse, we ask that you give your spirit to Brother Niles as he instructs us from your word how we could deal with the distress of the morning and how we could comfort one another. Because you have said, once we come to your house of worship, certainly we will be comforted and we will be instructed. So this morning, these things we ask through your son. You know how we feel because you lost your son in death. He was perfect. We are not. And so, we leave all these things in mind. We ask your spirit. We ask your blessings on this morning's proceedings. We ask these things, Father, in the name of your Son and King, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now, friends, relatives, we'd like to pay attention to our brother, Judah, that he will be doing the funeral response for us. We want to welcome him tonight. Let's On Thursday, December 24th, 1959, on the island of Grenada, Mary St. Bernard and Bertie Chipchak welcomed a baby girl. They named her Teresa Winifred St. Bernard. She was the fourth of six children in the St. Bernard family. That woman grew, or that girl grew, to be a woman that we all loved. Some of us called her mommy, others grandma, some called her T, TZ. I called her Teresa. She was a talented person, an all-rounder, equally comfortable mixing concrete and laying tiles as she was with sewing clothes and cooking a sumptuous meal. Teresa grew up in Grand Mal, St. George's, Grenada, and her family eventually moved to Pedmutap in the parish of St. David, where she attended primary school. There, the St. Bernard family enjoyed a lot in the outdoors, as they regularly spent time by the river bathing with their father taking care of the animals and washing clothes. The siblings report that Teresa was an outdoors girl. She was renowned for her ability to climb coconut trees, and she would usually climb these trees and pick coconuts for the entire family. The family rule was that whenever Teresa was on the tree and she threw down the coconuts, nobody was to touch the coconuts until she arrived safely to ground. Then, Teresa armed with a cutlass would cut open the coconuts and all would drink together. It was a great, uh, fun, and a jovial time for the family. When she was 10 years old, she came to Trinidad with her father to visit family. They returned to Grenada shortly thereafter, but a few years later, when Teresa was between 14 to 15, her father sent her to Trinidad to take care of his ailing sister. That was a very difficult time for Teresa. She was young, she was alone in a foreign land, and eventually she became a single parent. First, her daughter Janelle, and then two years later, her son Skeffington. Being a single parent of two in a foreign land, finding work was hard, 
as she did not have a secondary school education. We are here today because Teresa Winifred St. Bernard passed away on Sunday, October the 22nd, 2023. She was some two months shy of 64 years old. She was predeceased in death by her parents, uh, Mary and Bertie, and her eldest brother, Nelson. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to be here to be a source of strength and encouragement to the bereaved. The death of Teresa St. Bernard is a loss to all of us, but especially to her children, Janelle and Skeffington, her grandchildren, Kelsey and Keila, and her siblings, Pamela, Catherine, Randy, and Christine. The son Skeffington reports that in the early 1980s, Teresa began to study the Bible with Sister Wentworth, now deceased, and studied the book, You Can Live Forever in Paradise. She started to attend the meetings at the Laventil Kingdom Hall. It was a challenge for her to serve Jehovah. Yet she befriended Sister Gainel Ford, now deceased, and this friendship helped her to stick close to Jehovah. The result is that Teresa was baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses on the 1st of June, 1986. And over the years, she associated with various congregations, including the West Mova and the Central Mova congregations. The wise man Solomon is recorded under inspiration at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1 as saying, A good name is better than good oil, and the day of death is better than the day of birth. Now, why is it that Solomon would say under inspiration that the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth? But the reality is that at birth, she was Teresa Winifred St. Bernard, a human with a clean slate, no reputation, a daughter, a baby sister, a person with no established reputation. Her life course would result in either a positive or a negative reputation. And for those who throughout their life have established a positive rep reputation, a good name, it can indeed be said that the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. We can with confidence say that in the case of our dear sister, Teresa St. Bernard, that the day of death is better than the day of birth, as the following expressions on some of her exemplary qualities would prove. Her son Skeffington said, she was spoken of as a trustworthy and diligent person, always keeping her joy. She enjoyed making clothes for her granddaughters. Sister Ariel Sharice David said, I was fond of hearing her sing kingdom songs as she worked, having her mind on spiritual things. She could light up a room with her charm, humor, and genuineness. Sister Angelica Nile said, Teresa was like a second mother to me. We had many fun times together. She was very dedicated to our family, and we appreciated her very much. She was a hard worker. She would arrive to work at 5.30 a.m. and got going right away. Despite the ups and downs of life, she never entertained the thought of giving up on serving Jehovah. That was admirable. Teresa was an early bird. She always liked getting everywhere early. Brother Valen Highland said, Teresa can be described as resilient and fragile at the same time. I remember from a very tender age, Teresa came to Trinidad from Grenada. She lived in Never Dirty, Mova, and was always very humble, and at the same time, she was industrious. She came from humble beginnings, and she allowed herself to be driven by those encounters to not become a product of same. 
she loved helping people, not for gain, but because she wanted to. You can count on Teresa to do that little extra, depending on Jehovah to see her through. Mind you, she also worried a lot about her children and always hoped for the best for them. Teasy, as she was affectionately referred to, was a person with genuine love and empathy for others. Her quipped remarks challenged you to rise out of self-pity, and her penchant for hard work were a hallmark of her character. Her trustworthy and caring nature was always on display during her many years of service to Jehovah. The slightest thing would elicit a hearty laugh from Teresa, and every time she met you, it was as though she started from the last time with a joke, and then she would continue the conversation. Teresa got weaker and ill in the recent years, and so the brothers and sisters in her congregation rallied to her to assist her to be regular in the ministry. And so Brother Gregory Gomez reports that there are two sisters in particular who worked closely with Teresa to help her to be regular in the ministry by way of letter writing. This is what they said. She was a kind and humble sister who would be ready, well dressed, when one or both of us arrived, she always asked Jehovah to help. Jehovah to help keep her mind open and focused as she really appreciated what the sisters and elders were doing for her to assist her to remain faithful. In writing the letters, all the thoughts and most scriptures were her input while we would regulate the length and structure of the letter. Brother Anthony France were commented, Sister St. Bernard would be remembered for her deep love and appreciation for Jehovah, the God that she served. That love and appreciation motivated her to sacrifice her time and energy to journey to Grand Cuba, where she was instrumental in studying with and assisting some to dedication and baptism. Teresa also supported an isolated group for book study, as it was then called, on a Tuesday evening, which has now blossomed into the pre congregation. Sister Ashel Romney Toby said, Teresa was a great person. She assisted in the revival of my spirituality. She studied with me every Sunday for a long period of time. Truly a gem, always a hard worker, but loved the ministry. She found innovative ways to teach the Bible. Every month, we would be given a Bible quiz. On that day, prizes would be given, and food would be served for all the young ones from the Kingdom Hall with whom she studied the Bible. Certainly from these expressions, we see that our dear sister was a spiritual person. She loved people. She was industrious. She would be missed. Grief is a normal reaction when we lose loved ones in death. Jesus Christ, when his dear friend Lazarus died, he showed sympathy and he provided comfort to the bereaved, the sisters Mary and Martha. And we know that Jehovah God, our creator, he has tender feelings for those who grieve and he promises to comfort them. For example, the Bible at Psalm 34, 18 says, Jehovah is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 147.3 He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. So that Jehovah God knows how we feel individually. He understands the impact that the loss of Teresa has on us. And the Bible is saying that 
He is close to the brokenhearted. He can help us, heal us, bind up our wounds. But Teresa's death is not the end of it all. From her studies of the scriptures, Teresa St. Bernard was convinced that Jehovah is the God of wisdom, power, love, and justice. And this core belief as to who Jehovah God really is set the platform for her understanding why the people die, the condition of the dead, and the resurrection hope. And in each of these areas, Teresa found reliable answers from God's word, which she readily shared with others. Let's briefly review some of the truths that she taught others. Number one, death was not part of God's original purpose for mankind. Why did she draw this conclusion? Well, she was very familiar with the account in the book of Genesis. At Genesis chapter 2, from verse 15 to 17, the Bible says, Jehovah God took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and to take care of it. Jehovah also gave this command to the man, from every tree of the garden you may eat to satisfaction, but as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it. For in the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. In that statement, there was, the understanding was life would be perpetual and that only if the man or there was sin eating of the fruit of this tree would they die. Well, we know what happened. They went, Eve ate the fruit of the tree and her husband uh, although not deceived, followed her. The result is that they sinned. And Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 speaks of the result of that act, where it says, In the sweat of your face you will eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. So that there would have been a change in their quality of life, and that change would eventually lead to their death. But the decision of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden was not limited to them. All of us today are paying for that bad decision by the first man and woman. Why do we say so? Well, at Romans chapter 5, verse 12, the Bible says, that is why just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin and so death spread to all men because they had all sinned. So the first man sinned. He missed the mark of perfect obedience to God. Jehovah God had said, do not eat of the fruit of a particular tree. He went ahead even though he had many other options of trees to eat fruit of, but he disobeyed. And that resulted in sin entering into the world. And since we are descendants of Adam and Eve, that sin has transferred, transferred down the line. Our sister understood the inevitability of death. But she also knew quite clearly the condition of the dead. She allowed her viewpoint to be framed by what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? At, Ecclesia, at Ezekiel, I beg your pardon, chapter 18, verses 4 and 20, the Bible says, Look, all the souls to me they belong. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son, to me they belong. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The soul who sins is the one who will die. 
A son will bear no guilt because of the error of her father, and a father will bear no guilt because of the error of his son. Again, the soul sins will die. So she was aware of what the Bible says, that when a person dies, there isn't a part of you called a soul that continues to exist in some other form and that can influence activities among the living. Uh, that, uh, that understanding was further bolstered by yet another scripture that she knew well. One found at Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 5 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 5 and 10, where it says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing at all, nor do they have any more reward, because all memory of them is forgotten. And verse 10, Whatever your hand finds to do, do with all your might, for there is no work, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you are going. So she was very clear that when a person dies, they, are, they don't know what's happening. She doesn't know that we are here. She cannot help us, nor can she harm us. The dead know nothing at all. But she was convinced that death is not the end. She believed in the Bible's hope that millions who have died will live again. At Matthew chapter 20 and verse 20, the Bible says, Just as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister, and to give his life as a ransom in exchange for many. So Teresa knew that by Jesus Christ coming to the earth, that he paved the way for us to have a better life. He exchanged, provided a ransom in exchange for many. In other words, all humans, because of the decision of Adam and Eve, all humans, by right, are to die and to stay there. But because of what Jesus Christ did, he has given the opportunity to reverse that so that humans can live and live forever. Why was she convinced of this? Well, at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22 and 23, the Bible says, For just as in Adam all are dying, so also in the Christ all will be made alive. But each one in his own proper order. Christ the first fruits, first the first fruits, sorry, Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who belong to the Christ during his presence. The point that the very resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us the assurance that the resurrection hope is real. The fact that Jesus Christ was dead and was brought back to life convinces us that the resurrection is real. God has appointed Jesus Christ to raise the dead. At John chapter 5, Verse 25, the Bible says, Most truly I say to you, the hour is coming, and it is now when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who have paid attention will live. Verses 28 and 29. Do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice and come out. And those who those who did good things, the resurrection of life, and those who practiced vile things to a resurrection of judgment. Yes, the resurrection. Powerful assurance from God's will in the Bible. The anointed will be resurrected to life in heaven, and the other sheep will be resurrected to life on a earthly paradise. Those who lived without having the opportunity to get to know God, will also have the prospect of a resurrection. Again, confirming why we are confident in this resurrection are the words at Isaiah 26 and verse 19. 
There it says, your dead will live. My corpses will rise up. Awake and shout joyfully, you residents in the dust. For your dew is as the dew of the morning, and the earth will let those powerless in death come to life. The resurrection hope was strong in the mind and heart of our dear sister Teresa. Why do we say that? Well, I want to share with you a portion of a letter that she wrote. Remember earlier we said that she got ill and she was unable to do much physically in the ministry. And so she was involved in a lot of letter writing. And I want to read an excerpt of one of her letters. My name is Teresa St. Bernard, and I'm writing because I'm concerned about you and all my neighbors. We are all affected one way or another by world events. Many people are losing their loved ones every day, either because of the pandemic or war. How sad and brokenhearted they must feel. Do you think God knows or even cares about what we are going through? For a certainty, our Creator Jehovah and His Son Jesus know what we go through. At Exodus 3 7, Jehovah stated, I have certainly seen the affliction of my people, and I have heard their outcry. Yes, they are deeply affected by the suffering of people. Through His Word, the Bible, He helps us to cope and gives us real hope. At John 11 23 to 25, Jesus made a promise to bring back to life his friend who had died. And he showed that promise extends into the future. What is the lesson for us? If we learn to trust Jehovah, we will have the privilege of witnessing the resurrections of many millions of people in the near future. Imagine the joyous time it will be when family and friends are reunited with their loved ones who are dead. I'm sure to that we will all say, Amen. How can we benefit from being here? But a funeral reminds us of the brevity and the uncertainty of life. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 says, I have seen something further under the sun, that the swift do not always win the race, nor do the mighty win the battle, nor do the wise always have the food, nor do the intelligent always have the riches, nor do those with knowledge always have success, because time and unexpected events overtake them all. And we know that. From one moment to another, our life can change, can change dramatically. And so when we come to events like these, it reminds us of the brevity and the uncertainty of life. The reality of death makes us think about how we are using our life. By the way we live our life, we can make a good name with Jehovah God. Jesus Christ encourages, encourages us to store up treasures in heaven. At Matthew 6, 19-21, he said, Stop storing up for yourselves treasures on the earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. Rather, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What's the encouragement? Individually, take stock of ourselves. Take stock. What am I doing with my life? Am I living my life in a way that proves that I'm storing up treasures in heaven? Or my, in my mind, might I be deferring that to a specific date or a to-be-determined date? We don't know what will happen between now and then. And so we are encouraged to store up treasures in heaven now. By our zealous works and godly conduct, we can share in sanctifying Jehovah's name. The resurrection hope provides an incentive for us to learn and to do Jehovah's will. 
Those who do so can be certain that they will soon see their resurrected loved ones again. We should also use this occasion to be a source of strength and comfort to one another, providing emotional support. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a true friend shows love at all times and is a brother who is born for times of distress. Is this a time of distress? Certainly. Teresa's children, grandchildren, relatives are bereaved. And so we have the opportunity to be a source of comfort and strength to them. We, the living who are here this morning, do not hold our lives in our hands. We are here today, but tomorrow we can be just like the deceased. Therefore, it is imperative that we do the will of Jehovah while there is yet time. Bring our lives into full harmony with his word. By doing so, whether we die before Jehovah brings an end to this system, or we live to see its end, we will live because we have done all we can to make a good name with God. Hand back to the channel. And as we say, don't have you, we say, we appreciate those beautiful reminders that say, don't comfort them to know and to be reminded of uh, the hope of the dead. And also, we were also reminded of some beautiful qualities that just as said, Bernard would have uh, exhibit in a, a lifetime and among uh, friends. So, we certainly thank you. Friends, before we close the word of uh, prayer, sound and prayer, we just want to give you some um, direction as to view any of you. So, is I view anybody? After the song and prayer, please, viewing can be started from this side of the hall and the exit, exit to the uh, music exit, side to exit, so to minimize the traffic. And of course, we need to get to the uh, crematorium sites at least in the next uh, half an hour or so. So keeping that in mind, we want to get the population in this regard. So to close, we ask that you sing song number 39 with this title, Make a good name with God. Song number 39. Make a good name with God.
Our wonderful God, Jehovah, the God of all comfort, is indeed with heart, with appreciation that we approach you this morning. Father, thank you for the wonderful opportunity you have given us, that hope of the resurrection. And no doubt, as we continue to look forward to that day, we ask that you help us to be comforted by your word, the Bible, your association of brothers, and even the Holy Spirit from it. No doubt, the St. Bernard family are really struggling at this time, and it's reasonably so. Father, why is it that after so long, we still suffer the pain of losing someone? Father, we know that you are destined to change that, and may help us to continue to be comforted by that hope you have given us, Father. Continue helping us to appreciate that will soon come to an end. And no doubt, just like we see in Sister St. Bernard now, in the near future, she will not be that way far. Help us to hold on and to continue to benefit from a beautiful example that she would have set and a dedicated servant of you. And we can continue serving you faithfully in your God. So, as this day proceeds, we help us to continue to support the St. Bernard family, comfort them in this time of bereavement, and even many, many more days to come so that they can continue enjoying and continue coping with this loss. So again, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity and ask that you continue to help us to rest our hope on this resurrection. Comfort us, Father. So again, we thank you. We beg of these things, Father. We do it in no other name, but that we are dear and wonderful Son. Christ Jesus, amen. amen.
talking to somebody else. What number? Your number. Your no. number. My number. Her number. Thank you. Seven. Two. Five. Six. You mind if you kiss me?
Yeah, yeah.